Hey, what's up, my Uplifting Life partners? This is Ron Simplified Myers. And for those of you who haven't had the opportunity to uh, hear me before, first, let me say welcome. But then secondly, let me uh, identify myself. I am the author of the book, The Relationship Success Handbook, Get Rid of Your Problems, Not Your Partner. Now, today I'm over in Norwalk, California, and the topic I wanted to talk about today had to do with, has to do with, uh, cheating in the healing process. Now, what I've done, if you see me glance a little bit, then understand what it is. I took a couple of notes of key points that I wanted to make sure that I didn't miss in this video. So I might just glance just to make sure that um, I don't miss anything because this is a very crucial conversation and a major issue in our society. So let me begin. The first thing we want to talk about is a thing I call the difference between animals and human beings. And you'll see how all this plays out together. But animals live in a stimulus response world. In other words, things occur, they just respond. They don't think things through. They don't sit here and, 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 and think about it and go, huh, what should I do? Instantly, they just respond. As human beings, we have stimulus, which means something occurs. And we have the ability to stop, think things through, and then respond. That is the difference, that pausing. We have the ability to stop and think things through. Unfortunately, most people don't. Um, and they live like animals in terms of the stimulus, and they just respond. We got to get better at pausing and think things through before we do them. And I wanted to clarify that real quick, just because you understand that is the difference and we need to get good at that pausing because it'll keep us out of trouble. Now, how do emotions happen? Now, I talk about that in the book also. We have thoughts. We have, we make stories, we create stories from those thoughts. Now, I hear people all the time say, man, you gotta get control of your thoughts. Impossible. Don't even worry about it because you'll hear uh, the TV, friends, family, me. I'm giving you new thoughts now. You got Thoughts are flowing at you all the time. You're not trying to control those. Uh, so get past that when people say, you got to control your thought. No, you don't. What you do have to get control over and you have control over is what you do with those thoughts, which are the stories. You take those thoughts, you write a story. Those stories will make you feel a certain way. Based on how you feel, you will take certain actions. Now, and the reason I'm expressing this so you guys understand, emotions don't just happen. They occur because of the stories that we wrote. Um, I use the analogy of going to the movies. If you go to the movies, if you want up and down emotions, you go watch a drama. If you want to laugh, you go watch a comedy. If you want to get scared, you watch a horror movie. Why? Because those stories create emotions. Your stories in your life do the exact same thing. Once you recognize that, then when you feel a certain way, you go, what story did I just write? If you're sad, trust me, it was a sad story you wrote. If you're happy, it was a happy story you wrote. You guys get that? So you control your emotions, and then those emotions will create your actions. So let's go through that again. You have thoughts, you write stories, they make you feel a certain way, then you take certain actions. You guys, hopefully you'll see where all this is headed because if you understand the cheating, for example, you had certain thoughts and those thoughts, you started to create stories. And then those stories created certain emotions in you. Then you took action. You guys follow that? Okay. So now, let's get to the who is responsible for the cheating. Always. Let me repeat that. Always. The cheating is the responsibility of the person that cheated. I know. I know. I know. If you're one of the people that cheated, you're mad at me already. Just, just hear me through. We do things in life for one of two reasons one of two okay either to avoid pain or to gain pleasure one of the two 
Now, when you catch yourself in a situation where you're thinking about cheating, I'm willing to bet the conversation is not the pain. You're not sitting there going, huh, I could lose my family. I could lose the, uh, my, you know, my partner. I can lose the respect of those that are around me who has always held me to a high integrity. And now I'm going to destroy that. That's not the stories that you're writing. And if you are, then you can stop this video already and because you have a different issue that needs to be addressed and it's not going to be addressed in this particular video. So, but most people, what you're going to do is you're starting to think of the pleasure of what you're going to receive, the benefits of taking this action. So you've sat there and thought about how beautiful she is or the body she has. And this is not just, just men. Women out here cheating too. So this is not a one-sided thing. Um, but what I'm saying is you start to write this visual of what you believe it's going to be like. You've written this whole experience before it actually even occurs. Um, so that's why I said it's always going to be the responsibility of the person that did it. And again, I know you're going to justify why you did it afterwards. It's either because... My spouse is not producing at home. Um, I'm bored with our relationship. You'll come up with all these different justifications for your actions. But trust me, I, I still will hold true. I mean, it will hold true. <laughs> it's always the responsibility of the person that cheated. Because that goes back to why I did the beginning about the animals and Mankind. The difference between us is you had the ability to stop, pause, think your actions through before you took them. You chose not to. Then you took the action and now you're going to turn around and justify it and deflect and blame other people and other things as the reason. No, you didn't stop. You didn't think it through. OK, so that. So now let's talk about the two keys to relationships. You guys have heard me say there are two keys. One is accepting people as they are. I didn't say agree. I said accept. Accepting people as they are means just that. It is what it is. There's nothing I can... This is your life. This is your journey. Um, I had one gentleman. I made the comment about accepting um, people as they are. And he's like, oh, well, what are you telling me? That there are men out here that are doing things to women and they're doing things to kids. I have to accept that. And I said... You don't have to accept anything. The choice is yours. But the fact that you don't accept it is not going to stop it from occurring. People are going to still do things to women and to children, whether you accept it or not. That's why I said there's a difference between accepting and agreeing. And that's what I was trying to get that gentleman to understand is that you're basically taking what I'm saying to say you agree with what they're doing. That's not what I said. Accepting means just that. It is what it is. Now, why am I stressing this? Because when a person did the cheating, you have to accept it is what it is. I didn't agree. You guys follow me? There's a difference. That's going to take us to the second part, which I call the communication. Um, that's why I said there's two keys. One is acceptance. And hopefully we got a clarification on that. There's a difference between accepting and agreeing. Um, I've accepted that it is what it is. And then the second part is the communication part. Now, I've had people to tell me communication most important. And I go, yeah, but couldn't I communicate with you but not accept you as you are and we have conflict? Yes. But if I accept you as you are, then I come into the conversation open. You guys follow me? I come into the conversation open to the fact that we see the world differently. Now I'm just communicating with you because I'm trying to understand where you're coming from. You see how this is going to play a major role in this cheating conversation because I got to accept it is what it is. Again, I didn't say agree. But now we're going to step two. We got to do the other part of this relationship was we need to communicate. We need to figure out why and get to the bottom line on I'm trying to understand what took you there. And, and, and so that's the communication part. So now the healing process, both parties must recognize this is not about getting back to where we used to be. 
guess what? Where you used to be has you where you are today. This is about creating a new future, something that's better than what you had. And that's going to take place when we come from the accepting. And now we're back to the communication part, which again is the, which is, should have been happening from the beginning. But anyway, let's talk about this. The person that was cheated on. Number one, you must be open to hearing the person that cheated. Again, the communication part, hearing why did they go to this route? And some of this is going to be painful, but they got to be able to share and be very open as to why they're there. And you got to be open to hearing this stuff if you want to be healed, if you want to be able to move forward and create this new future. You got to be open to that. Number two, you got to be willing to change the story that you've written about them. Remember I talked about the steps. You have thoughts. You write stories which trigger emotions, and then it moves us to action. So as of right now, because I've, I've, I've heard someone talk about there's a study that's done that says it takes about two years in the healing process. If you want it to take two years, it'll take two years. I don't buy that it takes two years because I said, think about this. You've been with that person 10, 15, 20 years, however long you've been with them. And you had these one bit of story that you used to wrote, write about them where you trusted them. And one swoop moment, the moment you found they cheated, your whole thought process changed immediately. Well, if your thoughts can change that quickly to go against them, why does it take two years to go back with them? It doesn't. But it is going to take some work. It is going to take changing the stories, just like the story got interrupted that you used to write about them, the old stories where you maybe had them on a pedestal and you thought very highly of them and they had great character and integrity and I could trust them. And all. Those were the stories you used to write. See, that's why you guys follow me. You used to write those stories. That's why you had certain feelings about them. You guys remember thoughts. We wrote stories which will create feelings and that's why you were taking certain actions inside of your relationship. But now... You have different thoughts. You got betrayal going on and look what you did to the family. You got all, see, you got some new thoughts going on, which are going to create some new stories, which are going to create different emotions. And now you're going to take different actions. So that's why I said, so if you understand, the better you get at changing the stories and, and they have to become believable to you because everything that we've created, all our beliefs are just stories we've told ourselves enough times until we believed them. And it's the same thing. You wrote stories about the person, did you believe them? Now you've written some different stories, which now you believe that I can't trust you. I can't. Those, those are stories. Not saying it's not accurate at this moment, but they're new stories brought on new emotions, which will bring on different actions. So the only way that you guys, you guys follow me now, you're seeing that the only way we're going to get back to the healing I'm going to have to eventually change to some new stories, come up with some new thoughts, create some new stories, which will create different emotions, which will allow us to come back together, which is the actions. So, again, the, 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 the third step on there as far as for the person that was cheated on, you can't keep throwing the situation back in their face because you're trying to get back at them. Uh, you're trying to make them feel your pain. Uh, the key is if you understand the pain of being cheated on, why would you want someone, especially someone you say you care about, to go through the same pain? This is not about creating pain and making them pay for it. And this is an eye for an eye and I'm going to get you back. See, that's the difference in animals and mankind. Stimulus, something they cheated. And you just want to respond, I'm going to give back. See, that's not, not healthy for your relationship. You do want them to acknowledge the pain that they created and be responsible for their actions and at the same time be willing to uh, participate in the healing process, doing their part, okay? So now I want to talk to the person that actually did the cheating, okay? First off, you need to accept the fact that it is your responsibility. It is always, and I will repeat, it is always the responsibility of the person that's cheated. It is never anyone else or anything else's fault for you stepping over that line. That's the first step you have to acknowledge. 
Quit looking at it and saying it's my partner's fault. Well, if you hadn't have been doing it. No, you are responsible. Everything in life we do for one or two reasons. Either to avoid pain or to gain pleasure. We already talked about that. We already know you did it for the pleasure. Now, you got to come to grips with that. You got to accept that. This is on me. I made this error. I made this mistake, which means I have to be willing to say, I'm going to go through the, 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 what it's going to take in order to heal and create a new future because I made the error. I made the mistake. I have to accept that. Okay, then you have to break all ties with the person that you cheated with. Now, there are situations that it's going to be tougher, and by that I'm saying if some children got created in that affair or the cheating or whatever, Man, that's a whole different, because now you can't walk away from your child, which means now you're going to have to stay connected to the person that you cheated with. Whoo, that's going to be a lot more healing involved. And again, it's still going to be the same process. You're still going to have to come up with new thoughts, create new stories, which will create new uh, uh, emotions and then different actions. That part is going to always still hold true. It's going to take a lot more work. It's going to take a lot more patience, a lot more forgiveness, a lot more of everything else. Because now I have to actually trust you to hang out with the person uh, and not necessarily the person. Because as we know, you can see your kids without hanging out with the person or you coming with them with the person. But I wouldn't get into all that. It's a whole nother conversation because eventually you got to trust your partner and you can't be a person that says, well, every time you go see the kid and her, I'm going with you or him and his kid. I'm going with you because you guys know where I'm going to go because I don't trust you. That means the relationship is still doomed. It'll never work. You're going to have to be able to trust them. That's what's going to take, again, a lot more work and a lot more being able to truly trust this person again to be open to that fact. And if you're the person that cheated, you got to understand that that's going to take some time because you got to flip the script. That's that old saying about putting yourself in someone else's shoes. If you were in their shoes and this occurred, how would you respond? What would you think? Okay. And then thirdly, you must become an open book to your partner. You created that. Now, if they tell you, let me see your phone, you got to be open to that. I need a password. Now, don't be naive and think if the person is open to giving you books and letting you into their phone and all that, that that means that they've become faithful. There are too many different ways with different technology today that, that people can, can still cheat if they're going to cheat. It's ultimately going to come down to the trust issue. Um, you got to get to a point where we, we, we trust each other. And I know that this is in the past. It's not going to happen again. And we're good. I'm just telling you as the person that cheated, you're going to need to be open to all of that. I'm not saying it's going to stop and make this person be loyal, but you have to be open to that. Why? You created this. But not only that, you guys should have been open with each other to begin with. The communication, remember I said earlier, there's two keys to relationship. One is accepting people as they are. And number two is communication. If we had been doing all the communication to begin with, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Because even though the person that cheated is 100% responsible for the cheating, you as the partner do have a, uh, a part in the health of the relationship. You guys follow me? So that's why I said you got to be open to hearing their side and why and, you know, that kind of stuff, because you do play a role in the health of the relationship, but you have no responsibility in the cheating. It's always on the person that actually did it. And then we want to talk about number four. I want to talk about for the, the person that was cheated, that did the cheating. You have to forgive yourself if you're sincere about your, your future with your, your partner. You have to be willing to forgive yourself also, ultimately, for what you've done. Because if you don't, you're gonna have guilt, shame, and you're gonna carry that around, and that's not good. I always tell people, you gotta remember how you feel about you. That's why, again, my book is get rid of your problems, not your part, because I said, this is about you. If you're beating yourself up and you're abusing yourself, it's going to show up. That's the person you're going to bring to the world. 
That's not who your, your partner wants to see. They don't want to see the person that's battered and bruised, even though at the time they're thinking it is because the world is telling, yeah, you need to get them back. They need to pay for that. And that's, those are people that are vindictive. Those are people that are into revenge. Your relationship will not be healthy if that becomes your thought process. This is not about trying to make somebody pay, pay for what they did and I'm going to punish you and you're going to... This is about healing our situation so that we can create a new future that's a healthy one. Um, so anyway, I hope I was pretty clear on... Um, the cheating, who's responsible, uh, the healing process. Um, if I need more clarity or if you have other questions, please hit me uh, and, and comment in the video section. Uh, if you haven't, go to ronsuchannel.com. Again, Ron, the letter U, ronsuchannel.com. Comment on all my videos. Give feedback. Certain topics you want me to talk on because I love to do that. Um, and especially on this particular topic because I know how much this means to people. Um, so the bottom line is, as you guys know, I said it ain't right. It ain't wrong. It is my opinion. And if you're not having fun, folks, you should be doing something else. Learn that cheating, of course, is the responsibility of the person who did it. But in order to make sure this doesn't become a, a, a problem in our relationship, we need to communicate. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.